Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun and some quick impressions of Disintegration, the first game from new indie studio V1 Interactive. It is out on June the 16th and has caught the attention of some as it aims to embrace shooter and light strategy mechanics. Fellow RPS vidbud Cullum has been playing the campaign, we won't test the multiplayer until it's out in the wild, and he is now here to answer some questions on some story filled sky biking. So firstly, Colin, what is actually being disintegrated? Before we talk about what's being disintegrated, Matthew, we have to talk about what's being integrated. Because you start the game and you are told that integration is the practice of transplanting a human brain into a fully functional robot body. Of course. All the heroes of the piece have been integrated, so they were once humans, they're now robots. Now, the protagonist you play as is called Romer Scholl, who is a former Grav Cycle pilot and actually used to host a television show called Cradle to the Grav. Okay. I was happy with that. It didn't seem to impress you as much, Matthew. It reminded me of the terrible film Cradle to the Grave. You as Romer Scholl and, a, of course, a ragtag group of others who have also been integrated must take down an evil group called the Rayon as they look to rid the world of all humanity. Whilst I appreciate that V1 Interactive has attempted to give Romer and the supporting cast of robots personalities, there's no real drama when it comes to their actual task of taking down this group. There's no sense of urgency or importance to what they're doing. They're just cracking jokes and it seems like they don't really care. So why should I? I tried because I thought the premise is decent, but it's just their lack of interest rubbed off on me. Okay, but Halo didn't become as influential as it did because of its touching story, and I raise Halo as the founder of V1 Interactive, Marcus Leto, was the art director at Bungie, sort of designed Master Chief, and Halo's been brought up quite a lot in the promotion of this game, trying to draw that kind of connection. You know, so I think there are lots of people kind of curious about whether this is going to hold up or feel similar, at least, to Halo as a shooter. Uh, is it even close? No, it's not, Matthew. And that's a shame, I'm sure, to some Halo fans listening. Firstly, it isn't a traditional first-person shooter. It is, as you've already alluded to, an FPS-RTS hybrid. So while sitting on your grav cycle, you're shooting things in a first-person perspective whilst ordering a handful of troops on the ground. In trying to cater to both audiences, they've created something that's a sort of a middle ground, you know? It's... It, it's just not that exciting as either a first-person shooter or an RTS game. Now, there are no waist-high walls in the cloud, sadly, so you just have to stay mobile whilst also pulling the trigger. But when you're shooting at those on the ground, that does get a bit messy because accuracy is required. And far away enemies equal small enemies. Now, you have a boost that can get you out of harm's way pretty quickly because, again, you're trying to be mobile constantly. But the floaty nature of the grav cycle often means that you're not totally in control of where you end up if you use this boost. It's not really the best mode of transport, to be fair. And I think some people may be put off by any mention of like strategy or tactics. You know, this is real time strategy light. You're just commanding a small unit, right? Yeah, between two and four ground troops that are with you. It's very bare bones, so if the strategy element doesn't interest you, brilliant. You'll be delighted when I tell you all about this. Your ground troops, they'll mostly look after themselves. They're as trigger happy as Dom Jolly, Matthew. But you can call on them whenever you like. You can direct them to a location by pinging an area, or you can have them attack a specific enemy, again using a, a ping-like system, or you can get them to interact with objects on the ground that you can't because you're on your grav cycle. So that includes, but isn't limited to, supply caches, health stations, and so on. The strategy is essentially gung-ho, and that's it. They move as one, they attack as one, they do everything as one. So you can't really flank enemies. Hmm. Each of your units does have their own special ability, and that's where some slight bit of strategy can be employed, really, when it comes to combining the abilities. So, for example, you can get one of your units 
to utilize what's called a slow field, which is essentially a force field that you can put around enemies and they move at a snail's pace. Ah, oh, clever. Yes. I see what they did there. You can get one of your other crew to initiate a mortar strike on them. It's a little bit of strategy, but it's quite bare bones. I was expecting more or maybe hoping for a little bit more. Yeah, it's interesting because I played uh, this in multiplayer at Gamescom last year and it felt like there was a bit more going on there. Like maybe when you're against a human foe with the same powers, there's a bit more going on. I wonder, you know, I'd be curious to know whether single player or multiplayer was like the primary focus of this game. But, you know, I'm personally probably a bit more interested in the single player. So what are the actual like missions like in the story? You know, are they pretty straightforward? Is, is it quite linear levels? Is it a big open world? What's the deal here? Quite linear. It, the, the missions mostly involve you just pushing forward. Uh, it's not brimming with, uh, with variation, really. The trailer had uh, lots of barns exploding and it looked like there might be some fun destruction. There is great destruction. No, it's, it's not Levolution. Levolution is the next step in player choice and how you affect the world and the world affects you back. <laughs> Levolution. Yikes. <laughs> or, or even for a more modern day reference, it's not, it's not Control, which had unbelievable uh, environmental degradation, but it, it's notable. No, it's inconsistent. Not everything blows up. Yeah, I know you mentioned the barns and whatever else. And I came across a bit of scaffold that had some wooden slats on it and I had a whale of a time. Oh, nice. Now you're talking my language. It's, Tell me more about the slats. <laughs> it's, it's nothing terribly exciting, you know, like many other parts of this game. Um, whilst I said it was mainly linear, some of the larger outdoor areas where, you, like you mentioned, the barns, uh, some of them strangely feel very empty. So you, you mentioned um, some sort of caches. What are those doing? So you have an overall level because it's 2020 and of course you do. Yeah. And these caches that you pick up, they add to your overall level, that and killing enemies. Uh, the more you do it, the higher your level rises. And once you reach certain levels, you'll be able to unlock skills and abilities for members of your team. You unlock them properly by using points that you pick up through some occasional caches and through side quests. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? So you initiate these at your base before you go out on missions. You can walk around this in-between area and you can chat to members of your squad. It mainly amounts to just inane chat, really. And some of them will give you little challenges, like kill X amount of baddies using Y ability or combine these two, two abilities to defeat 15 enemies, that type of thing. To get these little challenges, you have to speak to these people that are scattered about your base. Why they can't just be little additions at the beginning of every mission, I don't know. Because it's a terrible waste of time going around chatting to everyone, hoping to pick up these challenges because the base is just so empty. It feels like they're trying to go for a Mass Effect Normandy style thing where you go up and you learn more about each of the members of your crew. But it, the base is so large that, and you're doing such a lovely light little jog to from one person to the next. It just takes too long. It's terribly barren. Right. I don't understand its inclusion. So that's really all you do at HQ is, is just pick up those those kind of quests. That, and sorry, I, I was explaining the upgrade system. Oh, right, yeah. On top of initiating your challenges, you can dump your skill points into your character, Romer, or any of your crew as well to upgrade their damage, endurance, blah, 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 all that. But you can only dump skill points into the members of your crew that are coming out on your next mission. And you don't choose who comes out with you on missions. The game decides for you. So if you've taken a liking to one or two of your crew, you can't just upgrade them into a powerhouse and have them accompany you all the time. Right. It's just, it's really odd. That, as well as... The, the rigid loadout of the game saying this is what you're going to be taking out these are your guns blah 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 just terribly strange to me I, 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 there's mm. so many decisions like that in this game and again like this is this is the first half of the campaign it, it feels like a missed opportunity in many ways mm. because I can I can see the building blocks of something here but yeah disintegration too maybe Matthew thank you for talking us through that column much appreciated 
but hopefully that's given you a rough idea of what to expect with Disintegrations campaign on day one and uh, we hope you will subscribe and come back to Rock Paper Shotgun to hear more about both this and many other PC games so thank you for watching and we will hopefully see you again soon bye for now Thank you.